Michael Steiner is one of Switzerland's most famous directors, known for Grounding, a movie about the downfall of Swiss Air, known for My Namen ist Eugen, that won the Swiss Film Prize. And now he's back with Wolkenbruch, and for the release of the movie, I met up with him and we spoke about the Swiss film industry and how easy or not it is to finance a movie. Michael Steiner, you're one of Switzerland's most uh, successful or famous directors. Uh, one of your most famous movies was Grounding, about the collapse of Swiss Air. Then you did My Nomin is Eugen, uh, and then uh, Sinentunci, and Miss Massacre in tw 2012. Yeah. That was the only one which wasn't that successful. Uh, and now, six years later, uh, Wolkenbruch. Why did it take so long for you to come back? because my other projects didn't get funding. <laughs> which others? Uh, which I had in between. I wanted to do other movies, but they didn't get funded. So um, two years ago, I was trying to make a movie for four years and couldn't finish the financing. So sometimes as a movie maker, you go into projects and then they last and last and last and in the end they don't come. So you kind of lose years for ideas. But why is it hard for you to get it Founded, I mean, with uh, my nominee's Eugen, you won the film prize, and then uh... actually, yes, true. I mean, Eugen was for before grounding, but yeah, with Eugen and grounding, I had one over one million spectators. Yeah, um, so it should be easy for you. No, it doesn't matter if you're successful or not when you go to state funds, it doesn't matter. It, your success is balanced to zero, so you're, what you did in the country doesn't matter for the new uh, judgment of your new projects, either they like it or not. And um, you always start from scratch in this kind of. Wave. Uh, so you talk about state funding, but you could try private funding? Forget it. <laughs> it won't work. No. The Swiss, when you make a movie in, inside Switzerland, you have a maximum audience of, let's say, six million people, Swiss German. That market is too small to make the money back of any movie. It's like, even my name is Dagen made like 580,000 spectators. And, um, you didn't make any win because the movie itself cost about six million. Then the distributor earns, the cinema earns, so as a producer there's a little bit left. And actually it's quite difficult to make money with movies inside Switzerland. So what you could do is you could do um, international movies, but then the movies would not be in Swiss German. Which well, you want to do? Um, until now, yes. Um, also my latest movie, Wolkenbruch, is Yiddish, which is uh, kind of a sister language of Swiss German. I love dialects. Um, but with Sen and Tunchi, I know that the, the movie costs like 5.5 .5 million Swiss francs. Uh, and then uh, your production company at the time went bankrupt because it had a debt of 2. No, point. They didn't bank we didn't go bankrupt. We didn't go bankrupt? No. Um, the problem was that we couldn't pay the bills anymore because one of my producers at that time was not doing good calculating on business, basically. Um, and a French co-producer stepped out while we were shooting after giving us the guarantee that the money is there. And then um, she quit the contract which she signed already, that producer, and that's why we, we couldn't pay um, the workers and the bills anymore. It took me 11 months to find a Constantin movie, Constantin Films, Germany, took over, the, took over our company then. So that's why our company never went bankrupt, just bought the company. Oh, okay. So bankruptcy was uh, in the air, but it never happened. Okay. What, what did you learn from that time? It was quite turbulent. I mean, Swiss media really wrote about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I learned about that time that um, when you have a financial problem in, in a cultural um, field, people are much more kind of thinking that oh, these are all artists, they're not good in business. This is basically a, a sure thing which I learned, which is actually not true, but that's the preconception of people out there. And um, I also learned that when you have 500 francs, when the shit hits the fan, you have five francs left. That's the second thing I learned. So you really felt that um, people around you from the same industry, they turned the back? not turn the back there on away. <laughs> you stand wow. there alone and you have to pick up the pieces, yeah.
And how do you make it back? How do you make it back on your feet? You have to find somebody who's, in that case, that saves your company, finished, pr uh, produces the movie, which happened, and then once the movie is out or was out, San Antonio, she sings, we're fine again. And now Wolkenbruch, your latest movie, seems, or yeah, it seems that it's going to be a hit. Uh, many people write about it, the critics are not that bad, you know, uh, premiere, everything went well, successful here at the Zurich Film Festival. Um, are people coming back, you know, that turned or run away? Oh yes, of course, <laughs> it's always like that, you know. Some people are always there where the light is and then they run after you again, after they didn't contact you for six or ten years. Um, I don't think that's something bad, that's how people are. Okay, so you don't take it personally? No, you shouldn't. If you take it too personally, uh, you will not live long in that business. Do you think Wolkenbruch is going to be a hit commercially? You can never say that. But you it, felt it? I felt the energy of the audience and I, as I read the critics, especially the critics from abroad, are very, very good. Um, Swiss critics are always, I don't know, some critics know their job, some don't, but uh, oh, everything that comes from outside Switzerland is very good reviews. Which that's always very nice for me. When this is happening, you know, when you get um, confirmation from outside the country. Because inside Switzerland you also have to, there's such a small pond, so in that small pond so many big fishes and what happens then is like even if you make a great movie, some critics are envy, some don't like you. And it, it always has, it goes within the critic. And you feel that, you know exactly what the guy will write about you before you could show him any movie, you know. So, that um, some critics are very good and some are not in Switzerland, especially a country that has, doesn't have a big film journalism. Mm -hmm. So there's only a handful that are really good critics and the rest is hobby critics. So basically you'll be judged by amateurs. Do you read them? Yeah, always. Then with Wolkenbruch, you, but there you had finance, uh, Fundings by Coop, I saw, for instance, as well. I think that was just a minor thing. Oh, okay. No, it was not, it's nothing substantial that could have made that. It was not a Coop produced movie. The movie was state funded by my producer, so most of the money came from the Bundesamt für Kultur mm -hmm. um, or Zürcher Filmstiftung, Swiss Television. These are the three big players. Without them, you cannot make a movie in this country. Anything else, like private sponsoring, is a very small amounts compared to what they invest in sports, for example, or in museums, um, what's it called? Arts. Uh, no, the most founded thing is the uh, museum music here, Opera House. How easy was it to get Wolkenbruch founded then by, by Federal Council of Culture and all that? That went very fast, actually, and it was a lucky thing that the book was so successful. Yeah, it was a bestseller by yes, Thomas Mayer. And it was very good that he wrote the screenplay on his own. I think that made uh, convinced um, the jury in these state funds to give them to support the project. It was very easy. I never had that before. Such a quick finance. A luxury. Yeah, it was just really nice. So the story in Wolkenbruch is about a young Jewish Orthodox boy who falls in love with a non-Jewish and his mother really has a problem with that. And as I said, the story was written by the Swiss author Thomas Mayer based on his bestseller. How was it to work with him? Because I guess you both must be kind of, you know, a little bit of egos as well. Artists, you have exactly your image of what you want it to be. No, not really. Actually, when you start with, to work with creatives, uh, the ego, good creative people do not have that big ego. Um, then I know Thomas since oh, almost 20 years. Sometimes we met much more earlier and lost contact and got contact again. So you know the person already a bit. And um, when it's about the movie, then he trusted me in my judgment regarding how to make a scene look good on the screen and I trust him in characters. And if you combine these two talents, then you get quite efficient workflow, and that's what we had together. Ego destroys good art. But still, I guess when you write that book, you know exactly how it's going to look like. I don't know. The, the novel needs translation into pictures and scenes, and in a movie, in a book, you can always write from the inside of the character. What is he thinking? Where is he going? He's giving his inside world. And in a movie, you look at people from the outside, except you use an off voice, which we didn't want. But the off voice is always a kind of 
Is it cheap? No, it's not. When you look at Trainspotting, it's not. You can make literature into movies like Trainspotting and it can be brilliant with enough voice. It's just a question, what do you want? It's kind of more direct if you don't use the off voice. You are forced to show emotions and kind of developments in scene. And it's the character has to you have less possibilities to express the character. So you need to see what the actor is saying. It goes over the dialogue and doesn't go over the inner voice. Well, what you did was sometimes the director would just um you know, address himself to the audience. Yes, that was a kind of an off voice we used just to summarize some principal things like Jewish culture in general. Um, this to show that in scenes would take, I don't know, hours. And when he says it in words, he gives a quick uh, uh, introduction to his culture. And for these kind of things, we were using um, so called um, direct actor speaks directly to the camera, to the audience. Most of the actors in the movie, they have a a Jewish um, connection, but you don't? No. How, how, how did that open your eyes to that new world? What did you take away from this shooting? A whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did, did it too. <laughs> but was there something that you have never heard of that you were super yeah, surprised? Hundreds of things I've never heard of. Um, on the other hand, it's of, I don't think that Jewish culture and Christian culture is, you know, is what we call the Abendland, it's the West. Both define the West, so this is not like me going into far away from my own culture. This is very close. Uh, but when it goes about Jewish Orthodox, I have a lot of Jewish friends. Um, Liberal. Liberals. But when it goes about Jewish Orthodox, of course I had to research, because this world is, was new to me. And there's hundreds of details I have never thought of. Or, Different rules, different kind of way you do things. Way you, but in the end, um, inside these rules, they're quite um, open, and the dialogue is very important. It's not like a, b a boring, religious, really strict thing. What you might think of, it's. I mean, at least what I saw from the Orthodox Jews, they invited um, me for a Shabbos. Um, they do drink. They go outside and smoke. Um, they talk a lot, it's fiery discussions, it's not uh, prayers and it's basically it's family life, you discuss the whole week, um, they even talk about football for half an hour. It's not as strict as it looks from the outside through that black um, clothes. Um, their minds are quite open for lots of things. Yeah. It's just the rituals they follow, but of course there's also more strict orthodox um, sections I've learned. But what we could enter and what uh, we were talking to these people, um, they were more on the liberal side of the orthodox. Most of the actors, as you say, they, like how did you find that? Like how did you cast all those? Um... My casting agent does. Mm -hmm. And the point is because they had to be able to speak in Yiddish, um, obviously, um, the ones with a Jewish background mostly won the casting. Not in all parts, but um, I also gave other actors the chance to cast for that roles. But in most uh, cases, um, people with a Jewish background got the role because they had a relation to the language, to the culture, and it made it much more easier for me to work with them. That was just um, the nature of the game, in a way. Yeah. Then you pre premiered a Wolkenbruch at the Zurich Film Festival. Yeah. I was wondering why not another festival? Why not Solothurn? Why not Locarno? Um, Locarno wasn't possible because we go out uh, end of October cinema, a theatrical release. So there's a time yes, issue. Yes, uh, otherwise it probably would have premiered in Locarno. Uh, Zurich Film Festival is end of September and we go end of October. Solothurn is in February. Um, that's how it didn't work. Zurich Film Festival was just the best slot uh, before our theatrical release. That's why we went to Zurich. How important are film festivals? Does that convert into ticket sales afterwards, or is it more for brand like awareness of the movie? Inside Switzerland, um, doesn't really matter. I think it's mouth to mouth still. Cinema is a mouth to mouth uh, business, so that means. You go watch it and you tell it to your friends, go watch that movie. That's how success comes into a movie. International, uh, it, is, it has an influence because you might sell your movie abroad. 
if you get recognition at the International Film Festival, that usually can lead to a world sales, so that the new movie goes all over the world. Is there a country already planned where it's? Yeah, there are some festivals already in, um, I think Jerusalem, New York, Jewish Film Festival, Atlanta. We're talking to these kind of festivals at the moment. There will be some festivals coming for this movie. I'm looking forward to go there. Great. And one more thing. I saw Thomas Meyer is writing a con like a sequel of a Wolkenbruch. Are you planning to do that movie too? Um, I hope so. I, he's all, only at the uh, writing the book now, so I have no idea of the story. And some movies are made to be, uh, some books are made to be movies and some are not. And the first you have to read the, the sequel and see if it's the same kind of filmic approach as the first part, but I'm quite sure he can do that and I really hope to make a second part. Great, thank you very much Michael and all the best. Tony.